Hey there, good evening. It is, uh, it's Friday evening. Uh, we had a busy week. We had molasses show up. We had bags to make. We had the cat show up. He was clearing some trees for the new house that we're going to get building here. Probably they're going to start digging the basement by the end of the month. Uh, it, it was kind of crazy. I got some clips of footage, but I didn't put it all together for a video yet. The more exciting news was we got one of our porks back. We raised pigs for the first time this year. And uh, I want to, I got it written down here. I want to get it while it's still kind of fresh in my memory. Kind of a step-by-step -step on what it's going to cost you and what it costs the farmer to raise farm locally farm raised pork now we had the, the we did five the one i'm going to uh, like the butcher did five the one that i'm going to the focus on here is the one that we kept for ourselves it weighed 390 pounds live weight that's about 100 pounds too much according to commercial butchering standards and it was a little bit big but that's fine it was just the way it went with uh with timing and lining up a butcher and everything like that so a little bit bigger a little bit on the big side but totally fine uh <clears throat> that 390 pound animal live is going to weigh about 255 pounds hanging uh and out of that you're going to get 184 pounds of meat cut and wrapped which is about 72 percent conversion now for prices i'm using hanging weight prices uh, and when when i do these videos i did one of these on beef uh I, I, I try to make it all in because it, that's as simple as possible for a consumer who may be new to this, uh, maybe considering shopping local, and, uh, they, and then they find out right away like, oh, well, I got to pay more for this, I got to pay for the butcher, I got to pay for that. So this price is all in. Uh, we don't actually sell really any meat, like we don't look to sell into into a market or anything like that. The meat we raise just goes basically to our extended family and that's about it. So... Uh, this number we just slept on there because we thought it would be, you know, a break even, a little bit of a profit number. Keep in mind, we've never done pig before. $4.20 a pound hanging weight. That's all in. Delivered to your doorstep. So we get the pig, we raise the pig, uh, we'll line everything up for you. Uh, and, and that's the butcher costs are in there and everything like that. And then bring it to your house. Uh, $4.20 a pound. That's going to translate into about $5.82 a pound cut and wrap. So now how does this fare out to the store? So you got to remember every pork chop, every sausage, every steak, if you buy it at $4.20 a pound hanging weight, you're going to pay the farmer or you're going to pay $5.82 a pound. So at the store, a sausage, a uh, pound of sausage, six bucks. Pork chops, $7.30 a pound. Steaks, $5.99 a pound. Ribs, $9.98 a pound. Bacon, around $10 a pound. Ham, around $5 a pound. And and the farmer has charged you $5.82 a pound on average. So his sausage, his chops, his steaks, his ribs, his bacon, his ham, right across the board, it's $5.82 a pound. Now, how does that shake out? If you take a 390-pound pig and you butcher it and you cut it all up the way we did with our cut sheet, you got to keep in mind uh, with pork, curing, sausage making, all this stuff, is it actually quite a bit different than beef and it's a little bit more expensive it would be comparable to getting a lot of jerky or something done with your beef um the more the more curing the more smoking the more processing you get done on this pork the higher your butchering cost is going to be so uh to get it cut up the way we did we did we ended up with about 52 pounds of sausage 35 and a half pounds of pork chops 25 pounds of steaks four and a half pounds of ribs 28 pounds of bacon and 39 pounds of ham. If you were to buy all that at a store, it would be $1,221.40. If you buy it directly from the farmer, it's $1,070.88. So that's about a 12% savings. Uh, some people think it's too much of a hassle to shop local or shop, you know, uh, farm direct, and, and the 12% savings isn't enough. If they don't have a deep freeze and stuff like that, it gets a little bit harder. And those are all, I mean, I guess they're valid points or excuses or whatever. But at, at those prices, at the $4.20 a pound hanging weight all in, you can save yourself around $150. And in these crazy times, who doesn't want to save some money? Uh, so I posted this on a, on a Facebook page we started called Peace Country Local Food Connection, I believe. Uh, if you're in the Peace area and you're looking to shop local, uh, if you know some people that are maybe looking to shop local, some urban consumers that don't have access to uh, to land to raise their own meat, um, you should definitely look at that site. I don't know if I can link it to this or whatever, put it in, this, in the description maybe, but check that out. And uh, 
And and please too, uh, we're only five minutes into here. Hopefully, some of you guys have stuck with me. If you don't, if you haven't liked these videos, uh, I think that helps the most of getting these videos shared around. If you click, actually click the button, the like button, and uh, if you're not subscribed to this, that's always helpful too. But we are. We're, it'd be nice to get this message out there because I, I think there's a really, really, really strong case. Not just financially. I'm going to get into the next part here, but morally to to shop local. Um, so. When I put this on, I put this same breakdown on our Peace Country Food Connection page, and I got a few texts and stuff like that right away, like, oh, that's, you know, all, all different kinds. It's too much, not enough, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what I'm going to get into here next is what it costs a farmer to raise a pig. Now, and, and this is this is me, this is w what it actually would cost us, because we don't have a breeding pair, so we have to buy a wiener pig, then uh, if you, you know, you got to buy the grain, you got to feed it. You got to figure out water, fencing, you got to put, find some land for it to be on. Because we had our pigs for nine months um, from when we got them to when we butchered them. That's over the winter. We got to throw in a straw bale and a hay bale and stuff for them to burrow in because we don't have a heated barn or anything. I mean, that's actually the whole point of farm raised is these things are outside natural as possible. And then because we f include butchering in, in our total cost for people so they know exactly what they got to pay, that's all in here. So a wiener pig, $100. Feed was minimum four hundred and ten dollars. I basically went on forty bushels of ground barley. Now a lot of people, and I make a lot of pig feed. They do a lot different. You know, they want more things. They want oats. They want peas. They want wheat. They want all these things in their pig pig, pig feed, because um, certainly the producers that I I work with when I make the feed, uh, people are very are very conscious of a car about you know the welfare of their animals. They, they treat them very well. They feed them very well. So, uh, <clears throat> wiener pig, 100 bucks. Feed, minimum, $410. I don't have a price to put on water, land, and fencing. Um, that But that all costs money, and pigs are hard on stuff. They're always breaking through, knocking down fences, knocking down boards, breaking wires, all sorts of stuff. So, I don't know, maybe we'll throw 10 bucks on there, too. Um, hay and straw, unfortunately, this year, it's not a very fair year to 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 put those in there because they're also sky high but we got to put a number on there so maybe say a hundred dollars to uh to buy that uh i it now all of this you you can imagine if you got five pigs it's divisible by five to a certain point right i don't know how many bales one 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 big round bale how many pigs that could could handle i know we had 10 pigs in there and i put in one big one big straw bale and they they had that thing torn apart right away that would cost 20 bucks i put in one big hay bale and they had that torn apart in about a month so uh and another one where it's kind of divisible by how many animals you want to raise and then the butchering cost was minimum 400 dollars. probably going to be around closer to 500 with uh with with, with everything and, and depending on how your cut and wrap sheet goes so 100 for the wiener pig, 410 for the feed, that's 510. If we say, just to keep it simple, 40 for the waterland and fencing, now you're at 550. Uh, for the for the hay and the straw, I don't know, another 20. So you're at 570. Then the butcher, he needs minimum 400, probably closer to five. And we're already at 570. So if we, if we go with... 450 what are we going to be at we're going to be at about 10 1020 dollars to raise this pig and, and have it butchered and i said the whole pig sold for four dollars and 20 cents a pound hanging weight is worth a thousand and seventy dollars so for nine months worth of work the farmer trying to keep this thing alive healthy uh, and 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 raised you know as, as outdoors and as naturally as possible he's looking at making about fifty dollars this year at that um right if you got three pigs and they I mean 150 bucks it probably was hardly worth it right to get into the into the selling market but you know that's the way farming is uh years some years are better than others so these are real numbers uh these, these aren't bs things like oh everyone's just you know crying poverty all the time and they really do a lot better it's actually not the case um generally farmers are are not really 
not really in this just strictly for financial reasons. There's a lot more to it, why people want to raise livestock and want to grow crops. That's a topic for another story. But anyways, now people say when they come here to get their feed, they're, you know, I, I hear a lot of, a lot of times people are having, they're struggling getting into the market, finding the market. That was the whole reason we set up this Peace Country Local Food Connection. I'm going to say that again. Check it out if you're up here in the Peace Country and you're looking to shop local and farm direct. Check that out. But people are saying, well, how, how do we sell? Like, we're not, you know, we don't know how to do the sales part of it. I don't know either, but I'm going to try to help you here now. When you're selling your animal, first thing you have to do is figure out what it costs the store. Now, because no meat is free. And as I've said here, you're between 6 and $10 a pound. So if you want to be more than that, uh, farm direct, and that's that's fair. That's very fair to be more than that. All you have to do is sell the difference. So if somebody's willing to pay $6 for a pound of sausages just bought from a commercially produced barn that you know may or may not even be in the country like lots of i mean some of this pork isn't even isn't even domestic to canada it's 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 imported yet um maybe they're maybe they'd be willing to pay seven dollars for farm direct and that's that's all you got to do is you got to sell the difference you're not trying to sell them the pork for for seven fifty eight dollars a pound you're trying to get that extra dollar or dollar fifty a pound more than they'd have to pay at the store anyways hopefully that makes sense and if you're a consumer you know try to think of it that way too if you if you think well oh i could get this for five dollars a pound at the store and this guy wants 550 you know well he doesn't he's actually only asking for 50 more cents to to go through all of the work to to do this a little bit more what i would consider ethical and more decent for the animal um another thing and i'm not going to get too much into this this will be just like a little little drop for you and and you you know you you, ch you google this check it out if you want from what i understand ractopamine or ractopamine or something was it was a drug that kind of was pretty big in the in the pork world i believe canada is shifting to be ractopamine free uh it was a drug added to the feed would help lean out the animals i believe it converted muscle to f fat to muscle uh, anyways, this thing's been a, been banned in like 189 countries, including China, Korea, uh, Europe. All these places have banned this drug. Canada, it's it's I, I believe it's actually still allowed. Now it's not widely used. Maybe it's not used at all. I believe all feed mills in Canada are ractopamine free now. Um, but anyways, things like that have been in the commercial production side for for the meat industry for a long time. That's the only way they can get these things to market. So a commercial market hog needs to be birthed to market in less than six months six months would be an absolute maximum stretch generally it's like five or less my pigs that we raised this year were nine months so basically double the time a lot more miles they put on themselves you know exercising running around rooting through bushes and everything like that um part of the reason why we believe the extra money to shop local is well worth it and uh more often than not you'll find out it, it doesn't cost really anything at all and uh and it's it's just a, it's a lot better way to shop so i'm gonna leave it at that as always thank you very much for watching if you've made it all the way through the video please um click the like button i believe that's how it works to get it more popular on youtube um messages like this i believe are kind of important to get out there for the consumer that uh, is, is looking to shop local or those who, who maybe even haven't thought of it but are will think of it now. So uh, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do that as well. And uh, we will see you all on the next one.